here is hostes, urbi yam apropin quabant. So the subject is hostes, which is a plural noun, but in English we translate it as singular, so the enemy. Main verb, apropin quabant, which is third person plural imperfect tense, from apropin quare, which is to approach. And it takes dative, so that's why urbi here is dative. And that means the city. So the enemy were approaching the city, and yam means now or already. So the whole sentence is, the enemy were by now approaching the city. And then the second sentence, here we are, the second sentence, Romani, qui in agris habitabant, transpontem in urbem fugerunt. So the subject is Romani, the Romans, and then qui means who, then the verb is habitabant, that means were living, imperfect tense of habitare, and then in plus ablative, so in agris, in the fields. Trans plus accusative means across, so across the bridge, that's uh, from pons, pontis, meaning a bridge, and then in plus accusative means into, so into the city, and then the main verb is fugerunt. Now that's the perfect tense of fugo fugere, uh, third person plural. So the whole sentence means the Romans who were living in the fields fled across the bridge into the city. Then the next sentence is magnum erat periculum, magna tamen virtus unius viri clari, cuius nomen erat horatius. So, uh, the danger, periculum is the subject, uh, was great, erat magnum. So erat is the imperfect tense of to be, uh, third person singular, and magnum is neuter, agreeing with periculum. And then tamen means however, so however, the virtue, virtus, that's the next subject, uh, that's a feminine third declension noun, the virtue of one famous man. So unius is the genitive of unus meaning one. So of one, viri clari, clari meaning famous, viri meaning man, both genitive. And then we have magna here meaning great. So in other words, there was great danger, or the danger was great, but the virtue or courage of one famous man uh, was great as well. And then cuius means whose, so w-h-o-s-e, whose. It's the genitive form of qui qui quod. Uh, so whose nomen, its name, was horatius, erat horatius. So the whole sentence means the danger was great, however, the, the courage of one famous man whose name was Horatius was great. And then we go into direct speech. So, qui veis me inquit, non ne periculum intelegitis. So, my citizens, qui veis me. And then inquit means he said. Then non ne is a question word, and it introduces a question to which you expect the answer yes. So we could translate it as surely. So surely, you understand, so intelegere means to understand, and this is the second person plural in the present tense. Surely you understand the danger. So periculum is a second declension neuter noun, like bellum. So this is the accusative singular. Uh, we then have hostes mox trans hunc pontem venient et in foro romano eos videbitis. So the enemy, hostes, they're the subject, soon, that's mox, will come, venient. So remember in the future tense, there's two different variants. First and second conjugation verbs go bo bis bit, bimus bit is bunt, but the third and fourth and mixed conjugations go am eis et amus eis ent. This verb is venio venire. So it's fourth conjugation, so it follows that second pattern. So the enemy will come across this bridge. So trans plus accusative means across. Hunk 
is the masculine accusative singular of hic, meaning this, and pontem is the accusative of pons, a bridge. And um, that's et, you will see videbitis. Okay, so video videre is second conjugation, so it has the first future pattern, not the venient one. So you will see, you plural will see, um, them, eos, so that's the masculine accusative plural from is, ea, id, uh, which in the singular means he, she, it, but in the plural we could say them. So soon, you, uh, and you will see them in foro romano, in plus ablative, in the Roman forum. So the whole sentence means soon the enemy will cross uh, or will come across this bridge and you will see them in the Roman forum. He then says verba mea audite. So audite is a plural imperative. It's a command. So here, verba mea, my words. So verba is the accusative plural from verbum, which is a second declension neuter noun, like uh, bellum. And so hear my words, or listen to my words. He then says, vos pontem delere iubeo. So the main verb is iubeo, I order. And because it's I, you don't need to look for another subject. The subject is contained within the verb. Uh, the object is vos, which means you plural. So I order you to destroy delere, infinitive, uh, and then pontem is the object of delere, which is the bridge. So I order you to destroy the bridge. And then in the next sentence, ego hostibus resistam et hoc modo urbem servabo. So the subject is ego, meaning I. Resistam, this is the future from resistere, meaning to resist. And because it's third conjugation, that means that it has the second future pattern, the am, ace, et, amos, etis, ent pattern. So I will resist, and it takes dative. So that's why hostibus is in the dative case. I will resist the enemy. And in this way, hoc modo. So the phrase in this way is ablative. It's like with this way, with this uh, plan, something like that. So hoc is the ablative masculine singular from hic, and then modo is the ablative singular of modus, meaning a way or a manner. So with this manner, in this manner, I will save servabo, that's the first future pattern, because servare is first conjugation, and then the object is urbem, meaning the city. So that whole sentence means I will resist the enemy, and in this way, I will save the city. Then, in the second paragraph, we begin primo duo comites cum horatio in ponte errant. So primo means at first. Then duo comites means two companions or two comrades. And the verb is errant. So two comrades were, in perfect tense, with Horatius, cum plus ablative, with Horatius, on the bridge, in ponte, on the bridge. So ponte is the ablative of pons because it's third declension. So the whole sentence is, at first, two comrades or companions were with Horatius on the bridge. And then the next sentence is, he tres vidi fortiter pugnavant, post eos romani pontem delevant. So he is the masculine nominative plural of hic, meaning this. So these three, trace, and then viri, men, were fighting, pugnabant, and then fortiter is an adverb meaning bravely, and then post eos, post plus accusative, uh, means after, or in this case perhaps behind, so perhaps behind them, so eos, is masculine accusative plural from is, ea, id. So after them, or behind them, the Romans, Romani, that's the subject, de lebant, were destroying, imperfect tense, and then pontem is the object, the bridge. So that whole sentence means these three men were fighting bravely. 
after them or behind them, the Romans were destroying the bridge. And then the next sentence here, Ubi parva pars pontes manebat, oratios comites in locum tutum discedere iussit. So, when, that's ubi, um, ubi, if it's at the beginning of a question, often means where, but if it's just in a normal sentence like this, it usually means when. So, when a parva pars, a small part, right, pars is feminine, which is why you have parva rather than parvus, when a small part of the bridge, pontis, genitive singular, third declension, was remaining, manebat, or you could say remained, horatius, he's the subject, and the main verb is yusit. Now, yusit is the perfect tense, third person singular, of ubeo ubere, to order. So Horatius ordered comites, his companions, accusative plural, third declension, to depart, discadere, that's the infinitive, into a safe place. So in plus accusative meaning into, into a locum tutum. Locum, uh, locus is a place and tutus means safe. So that whole sentence there means when a small part of the bridge remained, Horatius ordered his companions to depart into a safe place. And then Horatius nunc in pontes solus contra multos stabat. So Horatius, now, that's nunc, was, the main verb is uh, stabat, was standing, in perfect tense, on the bridge, in ponte, in plus ablative, solus, alone, contra multos, contra plus accusative means against, so contra multos means against many, or against many men. So Horatius, now, was standing on the bridge, alone, against many or against many men. Then in the next sentence, duces hostium ferociter spectavit. So duces, that's the nominative plural of dux, ducis, meaning a leader. So the leaders of the enemy, hostium is genitive plural, third declension from hostis. So of the enemy, the leaders of the enemy. Um, and then, in fact, duces here, could be nominative plural, but actually, if you then look at the verb here, spectavit, now that's a singular verb. So if duces were the subject, the verb would have to be plural. It would have to be spectaverunt, but it's actually singular. So that means that now we can look back at duces and we have to see it has to be the object, the accusative case. So he watched, spectavit, the leaders of the enemy. And then ferociter is an adverb, which means fiercely. It's the adverb from the adjective ferox, ferocus, which means fierce. So the whole sentence means he watched the leaders of the enemy fiercely. Then the next sentence is illi timebant, quod horatios multos in hoc bello yam necaverat. So illi means they, or those men. It's the nominative Masculine plural of ille, meaning that. So they were afraid, timebant, and this is referring back to the, the leaders, the duques. They were afraid, in perfect tense, because, quad, Horatius, subject, nominative case, had killed, so necaverat, this is from neco necare, to kill, but it's pluperfect tense. Right? If it was nekarvit, that would be perfect, that would be killed, but this is nekarverat, had killed. So they were afraid because Horatius had killed, the object is many, multos, then in plus ablative, in hoc bello, in this war. So hoc is the neuter ablative singular, agreeing with bello, from the word hic, meaning this, and bello is the ablative singular of bellum. And yam means by now or already. So the whole sentence means they were afraid because Horatius had already killed many or many men in this war. 
And then the next sentence, sed tandem magno cum clamore, tela in unum romanum jecerunt. So sed means but, tandem means at last. Then magno cum clamore. This is a very particular kind of word order that Latin uses. It would be more natural for us to see cum magno clamore, with a great shout. But often what Latin does is it puts the preposition, like cum, in between the adjective and the noun. So when you see magno cum clamore, you can translate that as if it were cum magno clamore. So it's cum plus ablative. And then magno is um, ablative masculine singular, agreeing with clamore. So with a great shout. And then uh, there's no... Um, there's no noun here that could be the subject. I mean, we've got tela, which is plural, uh, and it could, in theory, be nominative, but probably the javelins weren't throwing something. Probably other people were throwing the javelins. So we can assume tela is actually uh, accusative. And so jekerunt will contain the subject. So they threw jekerunt. That's the perfect tense, third person singular, from yakio, yakere, to throw. So they threw tela, missiles or javelins, onto one Roman. So in plus accusative, meaning into or onto, or even sometimes against. Uh, and then the accusative is unum Romanum, one Roman. So the whole sentence means, but at last, with a great shout, they threw their javelins onto or against one Roman. And then the next sentence here, beginning Horatius, it goes, Horatius magna virtute se defendebat. Um, so the sentence actually stops there. So Horatius is the subject. The main verb is defendebat, imperfect tense. So was defending. The object is se, which is a reflexive pronoun. So it refers back to the subject. So Horatius was defending himself. And then magna virtute is feminine, singular, ablative. And it's ablative because it means with, with great courage. So the sentence as a whole means Horatius was defending himself with great courage. Then in the next sentence, subito tamen. Ubi Romani pontem de leverunt, clamorem eorum audivit. So subito, suddenly, however, that's tamen. Uh, ubi, when the Romans, Romani, their subject, nominative plural, destroyed, de, lever, de leverunt, or you could say had destroyed, um, the bridge, pontem. So when the Romans had destroyed the bridge, this is a case where even though the verb is perfect tense, it's actually more natural to translate it with an English pluperfect. So de leverunt is perfect tense, destroyed, but you could translate it with an English pluperfect, had destroyed. So when the Romans had destroyed the bridge, um, he heard, audivit, so that's the main verb, he heard, and... There's no singular noun that could be the subject. So we just say, he heard. The shout, clamorem, accusative singular of clamor, third declension. And then eorum means of them, or their, T-H-E-I-R. Okay, so, and that's the genitive plural from is, ea, id, meaning he, she, it. So the whole sentence there means suddenly, however, when the Romans had destroyed the bridge, he heard their shout. And then the next sentence is tum horatius deum fluminis vocavit. So tum means then or at that time. Horatius is the subject. The main verb is vocavit, third person singular, perfect tense from vocare, to call. So he called. The object is deum, the god. And then fluminis is genitive singular of a third declension neuter noun. So flumen uh, is third declension neuter like litus.
so the genitive is fluminous. So then Horatius, that's the whole sentence is, then Horatius called the god of the river. And then here is his direct speech. Tiberine pater, in crypt, accipe haec arma et hunc militem in aquam tuam. So he, you've got a vocative here. So Tiberinus, uh, this is Tiberinus, the god of the river Tiber. And the ending is Tiberine because it's vocative. And pater is also vocative, meaning father. So he says, Father Tiberinus, or Father Tiber, you could say. And then inquit means he said. Then akipe is uh, a singular imperative form, so it's a command. Accept or receive these weapons, haik arma. So arma is neuter plural, like bella, it means arms or weapons. And then haik means these, it's the neuter plural accusative from hic haik hoc, meaning this. So accept or receive these weapons and hunk militem, that means this soldier, they're both masculine accusative singular, militem is third declension, then in aquam tuam means into your water, so in plus accusative, into your water, aquam tuam. So the whole sentence there means Father Tiberinus, he said, receive these weapons and this soldier into your water. And then uh, there's quite a long sentence here. Deinde in flumen de siluit et quam quam hostes multa tela in eum jaciebant at alteram ripam tutus tranavit. So deinde means then or next. He jumped down. So de silio, de silire is to jump down. And this is the perfect tense, um, third person singular. And there's no singular noun that could be the subject. So we assume that it's Horatius, he jumped down in flumen. This is in plus accusative. Flumen, of course, looks the same in the accusative as in the nominative because it's a neuter noun. So then he jumped down into the river and quam quam, that means although. So although, and the main verb is yakiebant, which is third person plural. So you might ask, is there a subject to go with this? And there is, it's hostes. So although the enemy, nominative plural, were throwing, yakiebant, imperfect tense, multa tela, that's the object, many javelins or missiles, uh, so that's neuter accusative plural, in eum, so onto him or at him, in plus accusative, eum comes from is ea id, meaning he, she, it, um, he swam across, tranavit, so that's the perfect tense, third person singular from tranare, to swim across. So he swam across, ad alteram ripam, to the other bank. So ad plus accusative, alteram meaning other, ripam being the accusative of ripa, a bank. Um, and tutus means safe or safely. Um, so that whole sentence there means, then he jumped down into the river, and although the enemy were throwing many javelins onto him, or at him, or against him, he swam across to the other, the other bank safely. And then the last sentence here, sic unus vir urbem servavit. So sic means thus, or in this way. Unus vir, one man. And then the main verb is servavit, third person, uh, third person singular, perfect tense from servare, to save. And then the object is urbem, the city. That's the accusative singular of urbs, urbis, feminine, which is a third declension noun, meaning a city. So that whole sentence means, in this way, or thus, one man saved the city.